one thing was to to see it uh, on television, to read about it in the newspapers, but something very different was to cross the wall yourself by train from from uh, Bahnhof Friedrichstraße to uh, Bahnhof am Zoo, and also to stand on one of the platforms at the former Potsdamer Platz and and look at this scenery with with. Uh, of course, all the traces from Second World War still visible, but also this uh, uh, incredible look at, at two different worlds so close to each other. My name is Jens Frederiksen, to pronounce it in Danish. I'm from Denmark, from Copenhagen. Uh, 67 years old and trained as an architect. I've been, I've been working as an architectural photographer for almost 40 years. Also been teaching uh, photography and drawing to architects for the last 25 years or more. Uh, very interested in everything that has to do with pictures and this interesting relation between reality, what we see when we walk around and look at the world and how we can uh, reproduce that in, in pictures and photographs and other kinds of pictures. That's amazing. This is really amazing. Same place, same time of the day. In 1974, as a student of architecture, at that time Berlin was not uh, a target for tourists. And I don't think many Danish uh, had at that time visited Berlin or were interested in Berlin. It was just something there uh, that was a part of the Cold War. It was a somewhat scary city and uh, unless you had good reasons to go there, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. But as a student of architecture, we came as a group with uh, our teacher, first of all to see uh, the famous architecture from the 1920s, but also to see Schinkel and to see uh, what had happened, uh, in, especially in Western Berlin, after the Second World War, uh, Hans Scharon, Mies van der Rohe, uh, Walter Gropius, and those architects. So that was my, my first encounter with Berlin. And uh, I still remember uh, that morning when we came with uh, the train from Copenhagen, stopped at, at, uh, at uh, Friedrichstraße, uh, Bahnhof, Bahnhof Friedrichstraße, and the train was searched by, by soldiers. Also this strange feeling that just by having a Danish passport, it was possible to cross into the uh, Western Berlin and everybody else uh, who tried to do that would be shot on sight. So uh, a, a, a very, very strange feeling. We had heard about it. We knew it from pictures and from from movies and from, from the news, but, but to see it firsthand was, was something of a shock. Back in the 1970s and 80s, when I visited Berlin, Bahnhof Friedrichstraße was the border between East and West. So the train held for almost an hour at a platform completely isolated, guarded by armed soldiers. The train was searched by both personnel and dogs until you could go to West Berlin. And uh, it was such a strange feeling to, to wait there. Uh, felt like being part of some bad spy movie of one kind or the other. It's a completely different story nowadays. And Bahnhof Friedrichstraße is almost an ordinary station in a big city like Berlin and only the museum, the Tränenpalast, reminds you of what it was back in the days. Well, this was the last photograph I took on 
the evening of the election and I still remember how strange it felt that I could just take out my camera, hold it up and take this photograph. If I tried to do that just a few months earlier, I would have been shot immediately, probably. But now it was just like any other crossing from one part of a country to another. When first I, I saw the Berlin Wall in 1974, it was something almost impossible to understand, this very, very sharp and, and hard division of a country in that way. Also that you had these two very, very different political systems so close to each other. On the one hand side, it was democracy. On the other hand side, it was a dictatorship. And there wasn't uh, anything but just this death strip in, in, in between. They were really side by side. Also, West Berlin was surrounded by the wall. It was an island of democracy in the middle of, of, of a di dictatorship. On the western side, you could walk all the way up to the wall. You could touch it. Uh, there were no uh, nothing except these old warning signs. Sie verlassen, verlassen jetzt West Berlin. Uh, you are now leaving the British sector and so on. But uh, uh, the wall was just a wall. On the eastern side, uh, you couldn't even get near to the wall, and you immediately saw that the whole idea in building the wall was not to keep Western Berliners out of, of uh, Eastern Germany, it was to keep Eastern Germans from entering West Berlin. Well, it's very hard to believe that these photographs were taken exactly here 45 years ago. But in November 1974, I was standing on the platform here photographing this view with the closed uh, Potsdamer Platz station there with the wall, with the death zone behind the wall there. And it is, to put it mildly, a very, very different world now. The 80s were a very, very dramatic time in history with the Cold War, the climax of the Cold War with Reagan and, and Gorbachev little by little opening up and, and softening. But first of all, to me, the 80s were the Cold War, the threat of nuclear disaster. And uh, I was part of uh, the peace movement in Denmark the peace movement was divided in, in uh, several groups. Some were uh, more or less dominated or manipulated by, by communists who would like the movement to focus on, on uh, American armament and the danger from, from America. I was with the so-called non-aligned uh, peace movement that was equally uh, against nuclear weapons, whether they were Russian, or American. That was the kind of movement I was involved in and that also explains why, why I, I, I considered uh, the fall of, of uh, the Berlin Wall something very, very important because to me it was also the end of the Cold War, the end of, of the risk of nuclear war. And I still remember that morning when I heard on the radio that uh, the wall had 
had come down uh, during uh, the evening that my, my first thought was go down to the main station and get the first train to Berlin to, to see this firsthand because if I ever have a possibility to, to experience world history firsthand, this is now. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to go to Berlin immediately after the war fell. Uh, I was very tempted to do it. And then uh, when I heard about uh, the upcoming election, uh, the first and only democratic election in the history of uh, the German Democratic Republic, I decided that this would be uh, a good opportunity to, to go and see what it would look like when something really changed. Uh, the election itself wasn't as spectacular as uh, uh, when the wall came down, but uh, it was almost just as important. And uh, this feeling of walking around in, in Eastern Berlin on that sunny Sunday in uh, March 1990 was very special, knowing that uh, the people walking there for the first time in their life had a chance to participate in a free and open democratic election. It's amazing to think that this is the same place. This was on the evening of the election on the 18th of March 1990 and it's hardly recognizable now. On the television, I saw uh, something from uh, from uh, the election, uh, uh, some from uh, from uh, the polling stations, where a, a journalist asked uh, uh, the voters different questions, uh, and amongst them asked, "When did, did you decide what to uh, vote for?" And an old man, without hesitation, said, "I decided 60 years ago. 60 years ago." that was in the beginning of the 1930s. That was probably the last time that man had an opportunity to cast a free vote in a free and democratic election. In March 1990, I of course saw some of these iconic places, including Brandenburg Tor, and uh, I remember that at that time it was possible to climb to the top of the wall and, and to stand up there, and uh, I saw a lot of people doing that, and I thought, well, I have to try to do that. I have to, to be able to tell at some distant point in the future that I was standing on the wall in front of Brandenburg Tor, and uh, it still to me is uh, one of the moments really to remember in my lifetime. <laughs> Back in 1974 when I took this photograph, if someone at that time had told me that just 15 years later, almost to the day, I would be standing on top of the wall there, photographing a new opening in the wall between Eastern Berlin and Western Berlin. I wouldn't have believed him. But in fact, that's what I did. And this is the photograph that I took in March 1990 uh, of this uh, new and, and temporary opening before the rest of the wall was torn down.
I remember from the visit in 1990 that uh, also the entrance uh, from Eastern Berlin to Western Berlin was so different from what I'd seen before. It was even more different that, than I had imagined. We came, with, uh, we came by train to uh, Bahnhof Friedrichstraße. It was like arriving at, at any other station. There were people at the platforms and, and uh, uh, there was no control, no armed soldiers, no dogs. Uh, there was just this uh, custom official to, to uh, put a stamp in the passport. I remember they had this box uh, 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 in front of them with uh, their stamps and then they could stamp uh, uh, the passport. And I thought to myself, well, this is my last opportunity of getting a photograph of this. So I took my camera and, and would uh, take a photograph of this uh, customs officer. And he said, oh, I, I don't want to be photographed. Please do not. Uh, by the way, it's forbidden. And I thought to myself, well, something has changed here. He thought, of, he thought of himself first, and then only after that he remembered it's forbidden. That's something new. And then the train went from uh, Bahnhof Friedrichstraße to Bam, Bahnhof am Zoo, and this whole no man's land, this death zone between Eastern Berlin and, and Western Berlin, completely dark. No light, no life. No spotlights, no dogs, no patrols. Even the guard towers were dark. The windows were broken. There were painted graffiti all over these towers. That was it. The last man had just turned off the light, closed the door and gone home. When the wall came down uh, 30 years ago, there was a feeling that this was the end of the Cold War and the beginning of a new era that could be more peaceful uh, than uh, uh, the past 50 years had been. Now we know that things are still changing, that things may not uh, be that peaceful after all. The future is, is still a little insecure, but I, I think it's important when you look back at uh, what happened in uh, 1989 and 1990 with uh, Die Wende and uh, the election to remember that as long as we keep democracy and the open debate a part of it, it cannot go completely wrong. What I saw on Alexanderplatz on the evening of the election, with people just standing and, and discussing the results of, of the election, they were grave, they were very engaged, they were talking about that. Keep it that way. Talk about it, discuss it, and come to something that, that, that works. That would be my wish.